The film begins with this girl named Guru Ra. She's the daughter of a big shot in the makeup business. Rora isn't just pretty, she's also really good at playing the piano. Sadly, her mom passed away when she was born, but her dad adores her more than anything. However, even when Roro has a ton of money, she's not stuck up at all. She's super down to earth and always happy. But there's a catch. Her dad wants her to marry this guy named Bong Joon Nam, who's going to be a doctor someday. Deep down, Roro doesn't actually love this guy, but she's going along with it because she thinks her dad knows best. Meanwhile, there's this guy named Sun Woo Joon, a good-looking construction worker. One day, he is heading home after getting his pay. As he was on his way, he witnessed a motorbike crash into a fruit stand. The rider was in a rush since he was supposed to deliver flowers to a nearby wedding. Wanting to help out, Jun hurried to a building close by. There, Rora was about to get married. When Jun entered her room with the intention to help, Rora got startled seeing an unfamiliar face and promptly asked him to leave, even causing Jun to get a nosebleed in the confusion. As the wedding was about to start, Rora became more and more worried because her dad hadn't shown up. Tragically, she found out he had suffered a heart attack right outside the venue. The whispers began as guests learned that Rora's father, Mr. Gu, was dealing with his company going under and had no money left due to debts. Hearing the rumors, Zhang Nam's family, especially his mother, decided to pull out of the wedding altogether. At the hospital, Rora had the sad realization that her dad couldn't be saved. At the same time, Jun found out about some drama at the wedding. There, the groom took off when he heard about Rora's dad's bankruptcy. What's interesting is that Jun has been away from his own home for a long time. Later that night, Jun found himself being chased by two burly guys to where he stayed. These men were sent by Jun's mom, wanting her son back since his dad was returning to Korea. It looked like Jun's dad had no idea about his son's reasons for leaving. Amid all this, Mr. Moon, the secretary to Rora's dad, tried to help her out. Then, he handed her a significant sum of money and told her to lay low because some people were after her. Rora was doubly heartbroken to know her family home had been sold too. With some cash and a car for Mr. Moon, Rora had to make it on her own since she didn't have any family around. Sadly, she had to miss her dad's funeral. After some searching, she thought she found a good apartment to rent. But unlucky for her, she got scanned by a sneaky real estate agent the next day. With no way to reach Mr. Moon, she felt super lost. Then, she visited her parents' graves, looking for some comfort. Turns out, Jung Nam still cared about Ro Ra, but his mom telling him to stay away caused Xion Wan to get involved with Ro Ra's money problems. Meanwhile, Jun found a new affordable place in Yanpo. There's this girl, a young, who's totally smitten by him and can't help but watch his every move. On the other hand, out of the blue, Ro Ra got a message on social media from someone named Twinkle Star asking her to meet up outside the city. Thinking this person might have known her dad, a hopeful, she hit the road to the given spot. Soon after, June was riding his bike to work, then Rora's car swerved and hit him. They both ended up at the hospital. The doctor would check Rora was Unsuk, an old buddy of Jungnam from med school. Turns out Unsuk had a soft spot for Rora ever since he saw her perform at her graduation concert. At that time, Rora's neck got hurt, and she had cast on both hands. That must have been tough. But the surprising part? June, the guy she bumped into, was the same guy she met on her called-off wedding day. She wanted to take care of June's injuries, but he brushed it off and just patched himself up in the hospital restroom. There, June felt bad seeing Rora all by herself and chose to stay by her side. Later, Rora shared she came to the town to meet someone, but it didn't work out, and she felt her trip was pointless. June, on the other hand, hoped Raw Ray would help fix his bike since it got wrecked in the accident. Hearing that, she agreed, saying she'd cover the costs using the money from selling her car. While she healed, June stuck around, being the support she needed in the hospital. The next day, Ro Ray had some roommates, and it was a patient and her mom. Funny thing is the mom thought June and Ro Ro were a couple because they seemed so close. June just laughed it off, saying he was just helping Ro Ra since she owed him after the accident. He was doing all sorts of things for her, like feeding her and even getting her some lotion. On top of that, June was juggling jobs at a food stall and a shop. Meanwhile, outside in the parking lot, Nsiuk was curious. He asked June why he was always around Bora. June felt a bit awkward, especially since Nsiuk hinted they might have met before. On the other hand, June's friend, Hyung, was getting worried since he was out all the time. 
but she felt relieved when he came back to their shared place that night. June had something for her, and it was a flyer about a part-time job available for a couple of days. Actually, June had to step away from Ro Roy for a bit because he needed to work. This left Ro Roy kinda lonely. She killed time watching musical shows in the hospital, and it reminded her of her piano playing days. Un Suk noticed this and gave her a pep talk, telling her she'd play again once her hands healed. Now the job Jun got from that flyer was super demanding. He got a bit overwhelmed and dashed out of a meeting, causing a scene. When he came back to the hospital, he saw Rora and Yun Suk together. Maybe out of jealousy or just needing some alone time with Rora, he took her out for a bike ride around the hospital. At the same time, Rora got emotional, upset about Jun disappearing when she needed him. Even though they hadn't known each other for long, she felt like Jun was a dear old friend. For Rora bumping into Jun a second time felt magical. As for Jun, he started having feelings for her, especially after hearing about her tough family life and failed arranged marriage. He even took her to Mrs. Jin's salon to get her messy hair fixed up. Now there's Jong Nam. He was super worried about Ro Ra and was trying to find her. He met Un Seok at work to chat. Weirdly, even though Un Seok knew Ro Ra was Jong Nam's fiancé, he didn't spill that she was in his hospital. And a twist. Turns out Un Seok had recently divorced. The following day, Ro Ra had to get some money from June to pay for her hospital bills. Her left hand was still in a cast, but it would be removed in a week. Un Seok, who was a bit curious, decided to keep an eye on Ro Ra and ended up at the store where Jun was working. Jun, feeling a little stressed with Ro Ra being with him, suggested that she relax at Mrs. Jin's salon. He'd assured her that he would find a place for her to stay after he finished his work shift. At the salon, Ro Ra mentioned she's new in town. Mrs. Jin was pretty impressed with how fancy Ro Ra looked and tried to get her to go for some budget hair treatments. Then, Ro Ra told her that sounds cool, but she's broke right now. At the same time, a young Mrs. Jin's daughter wasn't thrilled to see Rora there, especially knowing she owed money. But her mom reminded her to be polite, since Rora was a newbie. After that, there was some tension when a young asked Rora to pay for the salon services. Luckily, June stepped in just in time to fix the situation. In front of everyone, he introduced Rora as a student who would be staying with him. This made a young pretty upset and jealous, because June's place was small without separate rooms. In the end, June arranged a makeshift bed for Rora. Turns out Un Suk has been a big fan of Rora for a while now, so he's keen on finding her. He got an address and it led him to Mrs. Jin's salon. A young, thinking Un Suk might be up to no good, was ready to confront him, but then there was a loud scream from where June stayed. Turns out Rora got a shock seeing June shirtless, who was just trying to grab a water bottle near her bed. Who then they cleared things up. There, Eun Seok explained why he was there, because he was just concerned about Ro Ro possibly being with a sketchy guy. After realizing June's a good guy, Eun Seok left, reminding Ro Ro about her next checkup. The next day, Ro Ro felt she was making things awkward for a young, so she decided to move out. A young felt bad and offered Ro Ro a room in her place, but since Ro Ro had no money, Mrs. Jin wasn't having it and told her to leave. At night, poor Ro Ro got lost trying to find her way back to June's. She was super downhearted on some random street. Both June and Yeon Seok freaked out when they realized she was missing. When June showed up searching for Ro Ra, she was super thankful. He was her only hope for some financial help. June promised to cover all her costs while she stayed at Mrs. Jin's place. The more Ro Ra counted on him, the happier June felt. And even though Ro Ra came from a rich family, she was okay staying in a room that looked kinda like a storage space. Meanwhile, in the evening, ha Young did some online digging on Rora and found out she's the daughter of a big cosmetics company owner. The next morning, Roro enjoyed breakfast made by Mrs. Jin. She innocently complimented her and ha Young, making them feel a bit awkward but flattered. Rora then got the idea to work as a piano teacher, but because of her hand cast, she could only get hired once she's fully recovered. Later, when she hung out at Mrs. Jin's salon, other customers were curious about who she was. Soon after, Ro Ray openly shared her dramatic family saga. Her family business crashed around the same time her dad passed away. Some people were pointing fingers at Mr. Moon, but Ro Ray defended him, thinking he was off in his hometown. But little did she know, Mr. Moon was living the good life on a cruise. The real story behind Mr. Goo's company's collapse, involving Mr. Moon, remained unknown. Meanwhile, Mrs. Cho was mad that Min Su couldn't find June, especially with her husband returning soon. Around the same time, 
Roro became curious about Jun's past when she discovered English textbooks and an old school photo of him. When she asked him about it, Jun got angry and said she shouldn't be snooping. She talked to her friend Sung Gi about Jun's skills. It turns out he's talented in languages, math, and sports. However, Jun later mentioned that he only completed middle school. Later, Jun found out Rora's dog was ready to leave the vet. But Mrs. Jin wasn't cool with the dog staying at her place, so Jun decided to take care of the pup. On the other hand, Un Suk is going through some health issues that he's taking a bunch of pills daily. On the flip side, Rora is super excited because it's time to get her cast off. Once she's all healed, Ha Yum challenges her to show off her piano skills. So they head to a park with a public piano. When Rora played, everyone was wowed. She got so into it that she'd go to the park almost daily and post about it online. Jun, however, was a bit concerned because she'd play till super late. He even thought about buying her a piano, but he just didn't have enough cash saved up. One late night, as Rora was playing, she got a little nervous seeing an old man with a cart approach her. But he just wanted to hear a song that reminded him of his late wife. Rora played for him, and it was so touching that he cried. She was deeply moved cause it was the first time someone teared up listening to her play. One evening after work, Jun got approached by a somewhat familiar face. Surprise, surprise, it was Un Siuk. At that time, Jun initially thought Un Siuk was stalking him. But turns out, Un Siuk lives in the same building as Mrs. Jin, where Rora is staying. Jun felt a tad awkward around Un Siuk, sensing he was poking his nose a bit too much into his relationship with Rora. Now, Rora was all pumped for her first day at work. But bummer. The lady who promised her the job had a change of heart. She told Rora there were no open spots. This hit Rora hard, especially since she'd bragged about her new job to June and Mrs. Jin. June could tell something was off when she came home and figured out her job fell through. But there's a silver lining. The room June set up for Rora cheered her up a bit. He even said she could stay over if she missed her pup. But the real surprise is a piano got delivered to her, and it was a gift from someone with the username Twinkle Star. This mysterious person wants to meet her in a couple of weeks. At that time, Rora is clueless about who it might be but is super grateful. Now, she doesn't have to trek to the park just to play some tunes. In the evening, while N. Siok was working out at the park, he kinda hinted that he was the one who gifted the piano to Rora. Inspired, she decided to start piano lessons at Jun's place. With a cool name picked out for her lessons, she threw a launch party, which Jun helped fund. She even invited An Suk, who managed to charm Mrs. Jin and some other ladies there. An Suk took a moment to thank Jun for being there for Rora, but Jun was a bit puzzled. Why was An Suk so invested in Rora, who was just a patient to him? An Suk then shared that he'd been at Rora's called off wedding. Turns out Mrs. Jin didn't even know Yun Suk, a fellow apartment dweller, was a doctor. Later, while setting up her room, Ro Ro got curious about Jun's family, and he revealed he didn't have one. Fast forward, Ro Ray tried promoting her piano lessons by handing out flyers at schools. But a week went by with no takers. One day, she joined Dun Siok for lunch. He wondered why she was leaning so much on Jun, a guy she barely knew. He even offered her money to help with her debts. But as for Ro Ra, she felt more at ease relying on Jun. One day, there's shocking news. A body showed up on the beach, and it was identified as Sun Woo Jun. The mystery deepens as detectives contacted Mrs. Cho, informing her of her son's drowning. No one knows why the dead guy had Jun's ID or what's the real story behind this. Switching gears, Rora's got this special charm. Mrs. Jin became super fond of her, almost like she's family. Since Rora was having a tough time finding students for her piano classes, Jun, being the sweetheart he is, decided to sign up and even paid up front making him her first student, knowing that cheered Ro Ro right up. But then, in walks Un Siok with the same idea. But after a short lesson, Ro Ro quickly figured out that Yun Siok wasn't a newbie because he sat and played. And to prove it, he played one of Ro Ro's favorite tunes, someone who is falling in love. At that moment, Jun started getting a bit ticked off seeing Un Siok getting close to Ro Ro, especially when Un Siok wanted to drive her home. As they were leaving, Rora said something that brought back some painful memories for June. That night, he told her to stay with him, catching her off guard. She was supposed to go home with En Siuk and was all mixed up during the drive. At one point, she had En Siuk pull over and decided to spend the night chatting with June instead. While June shared he didn't have any big dreams at the moment, 
Roro reminisced about her favorite foods from when she had a job. She also hoped her piano lessons would take off with more students. Next morning, June whipped up Roro's favorite breakfast, and during her free time, she played tunes on the piano which made Mrs. Chin and her pals pretty happy. The salon felt classier with music, but Roro's nose led her into some trouble when she followed the smell of Mrs. Chin's cooking and accidentally stumbled upon a secret door between rooms. On the other hand, June was busy working part-time in a garden owned by an old man, Mr. Manbach. At the same day, Mr. Manbach, who some thought was just a guy with a cart, surprised Ro Ra by signing up for her piano lessons. Turns out, he wanted to learn a song she played in the park. Later, Ro Ra discovered he wasn't just some random guy. He owned the building where June and Mrs. Chin's salon were located. Meanwhile, at the police station, there was drama. There, Mrs. Cho got word from a detective that a body they found wasn't her son's, even though his ID was with it. She was super upset, especially with Min Su, whom she'd paid a ton to find June. But he hadn't found a thing. Then things got even more tense when Un Siuk popped into Jim's workplace. Jim was asking why is Un Siuk always watching him. Hearing that, Un Siuk shrugged it off, saying he was just grabbing lunch. But then Young Ju, Un Siuk's stunning ex-wife, showed up. They clearly had some unresolved tension. After they parted, she got curious about where Un Siuk was headed. So she followed him, trying to find out from Mrs. Chin if the piano teacher Un Siuk was seen with some young pretty lady. However, Young Ju suddenly snoozed off at the salon and totally missed her chance to see Ro Ra. By the time she woke up, An Suk had already taken Ro Ra out after their piano lesson. Ro Ra, being friendly, took An Suk to Jun's workplace to grab a bite. Funny enough, An Suk had already eaten there earlier, but he still chose to go there. Then, while they were chilling, they ran into Ha Young and Sung Ji. Soon after, An Suk, in a moment of oversharing, blurted out that he's divorced, which was news to Ro Ra. Later that evening, after a meal at Mrs. Chin's place, a surprise bouquet of flowers showed up. Everyone assumed it was a gift for Ro Ra from that mysterious Twinkle Star fan. But little did they know, someone was sneakily watching Ro Ra's apartment from outside. At night, Ro Ra called June to let him know her car was ready to be picked up from the repair shop. Next day, while heading over, June spotted Ro Ra chatting with some dude. June didn't realize it, but this guy was the one searching for him. Thankfully for June, the man, Min Su, took off in a rush before spotting him. On the other hand, Ro Ro was over the moon to drive her beloved car, a special birthday gift from her dad, who's no longer with her. Then in the evening, Hye Young noticed Ro Ro snoozing in that car and decided to spend that last night with her there. Just when Ro Ro was about to sell the car, June swooped in and stopped the whole thing. He didn't want her to let go of the precious memories linked to that car. So, he suggested a plan that Ro Ray could slowly pay off her debt and even offered her a job as his personal driver. Later, they took a trip up high, soaking in the breathtaking view of the city lights. But amidst this beauty, Ro Ray learned of a past event that made June unable to cry, which made her heart heavy. The following day, Un Siuk saw Roro's car parked outside the apartment and decided to stop at sale. He then went to Seoul to visit a doctor. While he was there, Zhang Nam ran into an old friend and greeted them. It seemed like Zhang Nam was interested in finding a new romantic connection, especially since he hadn't heard from Ro Ra in a long time. Then a picture on the hospital's notice board grabbed Un Suk's attention. It was June attending a hospital community event. At that time, Un Suk was taken aback when he learned that June was the runaway son of the hospital's owner, having disappeared during his high school days. Meanwhile, every time June returned home from his job, Ro Ra greeted him with a special song, knowing that June would just act cool, grabbing a drink without acknowledging Ro Ra. But something seemed off to Ro Ra. She thinks June appeared a tad taller than she remembered. As for Yun Siuk, he wasn't entirely sure that June was the student who had left many years ago. He remembered meeting June at a seminar held at Sun Woo Hospital just a year ago. One day at Madame Jin's beauty salon, a handsome guy named An Jong Ho came in for a haircut. However, things didn't go as planned. My name Jin accidentally cut his hair way too short. She was really embarrassed, but Zhang Ho didn't show his frustration outwardly. Later that night, as a playful act of revenge, he put glue on the salon's door handle. Meanwhile, Un Suk's interest in Jun led him to drop off a medicine box at Jun's workplace. When Jun saw it, memories flooded back of a past hospital visit with Un Siuk. This made Jun anxious about how much Un Siuk might know about his real identity. So the following day, June and Yun Suk met up. 
While Eun Seok could have spilled the beans about Jun's location to his family, he chose to stay mum. He wanted to understand why Jun was hiding in the first place. Eun Seok also nudged Jun to be more transparent with Ro Ra, particularly about his true student status. Meanwhile, back at home, Jun's dad had returned to Korea and kept asking about his son. His mom played it cool, suggesting Jun was just busy with tutoring gigs out of town. Little did dad know, Jun had actually taken off from home, and Mrs. Cho knew her husband would hit the roof if he found out. Back at the salon, after Madame Jin found herself in a funny situation with her hands stuck because of the glue prank, Jong Ho decided to enroll in piano lessons. And right after him, Mr. Man Bok walked in. Despite starting piano lessons a bit late in life, he was very enthusiastic about it. Rora, being her cheerful self, taught him with a lot of patience and her usual sunny attitude. In the evening, Rora noticed that June hadn't come home and she got worried. Then, she went to the store where June worked before his shift at the food stall. Turns out, June was lost in thought about his past. He used to have a best friend, Jahan, but he tragically passed away. Some folks blame June for it, thinking he hurt Jahan on purpose just to be top of their class. But the truth is, June feels so bad because Jahan had the accident while on his way to one of June's big events. This has weighed heavily on June. Then, he stopped paying attention in school, even skipping exams, which really upset his dad who thought June wasn't strong enough mentally. One day, June even sneaked out of his room by climbing out the window. Then, June once mentioned to Rora that if he ever disappeared, Un Siok would know where to find him. He even hinted to Rora that he might want some alone time, which made her really sad. Later, right outside her business, Rora saw a kid who looked like he wanted to learn but couldn't afford it. So she warmly invited him to play the piano with her. Jan Min, the kid, spilled the beans to Rora that Jun was actually super happy when he heard her play music at home. But for some reason, Jun acted all cool and normal in front of her. In that moment, Ro Ro really wanted Jun to stick around, especially since he still owed her money. The next day, Jun decided to hang around in town a bit longer because he had some business with Eun Siok. The thing is, Jun knew Eun Siok was just pretending in front of Ro Ra. Why? Because Eun Siok is tight with the guy Ro Ra is going to marry, and they both have secrets. In the end, they both decided to just act normal and pretend they didn't know anything. But Jun didn't like seeing Eun Siok get close to Ro Ra. So, Wherever it unsucked, took Ro Ra, like even if it was just for ice cream, Jun followed. Then they chatted about this Twinkle Star online account, and they were super excited because Ro Ray was going to meet this person at a cafe. They even wanted to film it as a memory. When the big day came, Ro Ra got all dolled up, and they headed to the cafe. At first, they thought the guy behind the account was Jong Ho. But nope, Jong Ho was just there to meet a buddy. As for Jun? He wasn't with Rora because he was busy with some important stuff with a guy named Mr. Manbok. In the morning, Mr. Manbok had a visitor, Min Su. Min Su was looking for June. But Mr. Manbok said he don't know where June is right now. June probably has his reasons for leaving, but he said he'd be back when he's ready. By the afternoon, the guy behind the Twinkle Star account still hadn't shown up. Rora and her friends finally gave up and headed home. But then, they got a message from him saying he couldn't make it because something important came up. Things got weirder when they saw a room full of Roro's photos that Jong Ho had. He got all those pictures from her social media. Roro started thinking that maybe Eun Seok was the Twinkle Star guy because of the way he sent messages and acted lately. But when she told June about her hunch, he didn't say much. He just told her not to jump to conclusions. The next day, Roro wanted to do something nice for Eun Seok to thank him for being so kind. Since he was busy at work, she decided to make him some kimbap. Mrs. Jin and some other ladies held her out. Then, after giving Eun Suk his food, Ro Ro swung by a tutoring center. She got inspired and hoped her own tutoring place would get lots of students too. She's got this plan which was to prep one of her students for a big music competition to get her name out there. Ja Min, one of her students, is super talented and could be the one. But she realized she doesn't even know where he lives. Meanwhile, when Ro Ro was teaching Jong Ho, Jun felt something was off about the guy and asked Mrs. Jin to keep an eye on Ro Ra. The next day, Mrs. Cho met up with Mr. Manbok and gave him some cash, hoping he'd spill some details about Jun. On her way back to Seoul, she thought she saw Jun with a girl, but when she got close to him, Jun. Oh, and turns out Mrs. Cho had attended Ro Ro's wedding because she knew Ro Ra's in-laws. Later, Mr. Manbok bumped into Jun and tried to convince him to go home 
saying his mom was super worried. He even handed over the money Mrs. Cho gave him. But Jun wasn't having any of it. At the same time, Yun Seok was with Ro Ra, returning her food container at the apartment garden. During a day off, Jun and Ro Ra went on a mini adventure to find out where Jamin lived. When they got to his place, it was a mess. Rora figured out that Jamin doesn't have a mom and his dad often leaves him alone for work. Then, Rora decided to help out Jamin by letting him come to her tutoring center for free. The only catch was that he had to practice a lot. But she quickly found out Jamin couldn't read music. He taught himself everything by ear. That night, she invited him for dinner at Mrs. Chin's place. At the dinner, Young noticed how close Rora and Jun were, which made her super jealous. Young was heartbroken since Jun didn't return her feelings. Trying to get back at him, Young set up a plan. She arranged a movie date for Raw Ra and Yun Siuk, and then bailed at the last minute, leaving the two of them alone. Jun, who was excited about making dinner for Raw Ra, got worried when she didn't show up. He soon found out she was at the movies with Yun Siuk, and feeling a bit possessive, he rushed to get her. At the movies, Yun Siuk took a leap and told Raw Ra he had feelings for her. She kindly turned him down, but thanked him for always being there for her. Jun, spotting them from afar, made an excuse about fetching Rora, so she wouldn't have to go home alone late at night. The following day, Minsu had a realization when he remembered that the tutor mentioned in the brochure had a connection to Jun. Using the brochure as his guide, he went to the place where Ra Rake teaches piano. When he reached Jun's house and found it empty, he felt confident that he was on the right track. He intended to bring Jun back with him, but when he tried calling Mrs. Cho, she didn't answer. Then things got messy when he bumped into Jung Ho and mistakenly thought Jung Ho was hired to replace him. They got into a fight, and poor Min Su ended up with a painful head injury. At that time, Jung Ho, not wanting to get caught, swiped Min Su's wallet and phone. Thankfully, Mrs. Jin found Min Su and got into a hospital. But the next two days, Min Su was out cold, and detectives couldn't track down his family. Meanwhile, Rora got the creeps when Jung Ho showed up with flowers at the tutoring spot. She felt even more uncomfortable when he got aggressive. She told him they were done if he was up to something. Later, Jong Ho bought a gift for Ro Ra from Jun's workplace. There, Jun saw how Jong Ho acted and raced home to warn Ro Ro to be wary of the guy. But then, Ro Ro reassured him, saying she wasn't tutoring Jong Ho anymore. After Jun rejected her, the young felt annoyed with Ro Ra. However, it was tough for her to stay angry because Ro Ro was always very kind to her. Then it got on her that Sun Ji had always been really interested in her, and she hadn't realized it. The next morning, Rora didn't react at all when a young gave her an extremely flashy hairstyle and makeup. Rora had plans for the day to show the local moms how well Jamin was doing in practice, as he had a big competition in another city the following day. Everyone was very excited for him. They even helped him get dressed up and went along to support him. Mrs. Cho was quite concerned because she hadn't received any word from Min Su. To make matters worse, she couldn't contact him because Jong Ho had his phone. Meanwhile, Jun's dad, suspecting that his wife was involved in something, wanted to find out what she and Jimin were doing while he was away. At the same time, Jamin had a rough time on his way to an event. Out of nowhere, Jong Ho grabbed him and even twisted his hand so badly he hurt it. Before Jamin could say anything about his hand, Jong Ho bolted when he saw Rora. Poor Jam Min tried playing the piano at the event, but he could only use one hand. So the judges said he couldn't compete. At that time, Rora felt for him, remembering her own tough time when she was younger. Back then, her dad was her rock. She tried to be that support for Jam Min, even if his performance didn't go as planned. Later, they all went out to eat since Han Siuk wanted to treat them. It was a cozy time. They might not be family, but they had each other's backs. This bond had helped Rora become a lot tougher. While they were driving Jam Min home, Yun Seok figured out that the person who had grabbed Jam Min was one of Ro Ro's students. However, things got frightening when someone asked Ro Ro to move her car at the restaurant, and then she disappeared. Yun Seok was really worried when he returned and found her phone on the ground in the parking lot. June had been watching Jong Ho closely and had a feeling he had taken her to a far location. Then June got a huge shock when he burst into a room filled with old photos of Ro Ra. Creepily enough, John Ho even had Rora's student card. Some stuff in that room reminded Jun of a place he'd trained at before. So he raced to that place, hoping to find Rora. Meanwhile, Rora, tied up and unable to yell because her mouth was covered, tried to make noise when she heard Jun's voice. She tried to get his attention by falling to the ground. 
fast forward a bit. Finally, Jun found where Ra Ro was and got into a fight with Zhang Ho. At that time, Zhang Ho ended up seriously hurt, and poor Ro Ro passed out from all the stress. Jun, seeing Zhang Ho bleeding and not moving, thought he might have accidentally killed him. Back at Jun's place, Mr. Manbok and some others figured out that Jun was in a heap of trouble after saving Ro Ra. The cops took Jun in for questioning, and both Ro Ra and Zhang Ho were rushed to the hospital. At the police station, a detective recognized Jun as Mrs. Cho's son. You know, the wealthy lady from Seoul who'd been looking for Jun. At that time, Mr. Manbok wanted to let her know what was going on, but Jun didn't want her involved. The day after the whole mess, Mrs. Cho showed up at the police station because the detective had called her. Once everything was sorted out, she took Jun home since he was still underage and wasn't being held. A young and son Ji were totally shocked to find out Jun was their age. They couldn't do much when Jun's parents decided he had to leave the town. But Jim didn't lose hope. Throughout their journey, he was really worried, thinking about Ro Ro's condition in the hospital. When Ro Ro woke up, she met Min Su, who revealed Jun's true identity. So she quickly got into a taxi and rushed to the police station. Unfortunately, she arrived too late. When Jun and Sun Ji tried to contact her, Mrs. Cho had already taken the lead and was using Ro Roy as bait to try and lure Jun out. That night, there was another surprising twist. Jun's dad came to town, which made Mrs. Cho even more anxious. Jun had been stuck at home for a month, and he was getting restless. His phone had been taken away, so he couldn't talk to Ro Ra. Meanwhile, Ro Ra felt a void in her life without Jun around, so she tried to stay occupied by eating a lot and doing things she wouldn't normally do. The following day, Ro Ra continued her daily routine, mainly teaching piano to Mr. Mainbach. And Siok would drop by from time to time to check on Ro Ra and offer his help. As for the situation with Jun's ID being found in a body bag, it happened because someone had stolen Jun's wallet at a market. Meanwhile, Min Su had become close to Mrs. Jim, as she had helped him when he injured his head. Meanwhile, as Mr. Manbok was improving his piano skills, Ro Ray organized a small gathering for the neighbors. She thought he would enjoy playing his late wife's favorite song for them. At the same time, while the grown-ups were doing their thing, Hyde Young and Sung Ji hatched a plan to head to Seoul and see Jun. After a long trip, they made it to Jun's fancy house, but Mrs. Cho wasn't having any of it. She told her staff to boot them out, worried they'd mess with Jun's head. From his room, Jun caught sight of his friends, so he pulled a fast one, pretending to faint. Mrs. Cho freaked and called an ambulance, thinking he'd starved himself or something. But that night, Jun was the real mastermind. He switched places with Sung Gi, making the medics think Sung Gi was the patient. And his plan was to head back to Enpo and tell Ro Ra everything face to face. Meanwhile, the next day, Mr. Manbok's performance was a hit. Everyone was so touched seeing him play the piano with so much emotion. After the neighbors left, Ro Ra felt a bit lonely, thinking about Jun. But to her surprise, Jun showed up that very night. They went for a bike ride to their favorite spot in Yenpo. There, Jun opened up about why he'd run away from home. He was tired of his family's pressure and still felt bad about his friend's death. But after spending time with Ro Ra, he started seeing life differently. He didn't think their age difference mattered when it came to love. Back in Seoul, Mrs. Cho got a shock when she found out that the patient wasn't actually Jun. But soon after, Jun called her, promising he'd be home that night. He even arranged for his friends to be driven back to Empo. After his heart-to-heart -heart with Ro Ra, Jun started studying more and being nicer to his mom. He just wanted his phone back to stay in touch with Ro Ra and his buddies. But on a different note, one of the tutors mentioned that Jun was now pretty keen on studying math in college. After a few days in Seoul, Jun got word that Ro Ra had a bike accident. Soon after, he rushed to the hospital, relieved to find she just had a minor wrist injury. But that day, Jun was supposed to meet his parents and tutor. This upset Mrs. Cho who was now eager to meet Ro Ra. She didn't want Jun's studies to suffer because of romance. At that time, Mrs. Jin and her pal felt Ro Ra might get some heat from Mrs. Cho, so they kept an eye on the meeting. Ro Ra calmly listened to Mrs. Cho, understanding her concerns. She promised to send Jun back to his proper path. To make a clean break, Ro Ra gave back the money Jun had lent her. Later on, when Ro Ra met Jun in Seoul, she slipped him a letter before leaving. The note urged him to focus on school and to forget about her. She also mentioned she'd be okay, surrounded by her loved ones. After several months had passed, Jun received word from Zhang Nam that Ro Ra and Yan Siuk were getting ready to get married. Jun wasted no time and rushed to the church, interrupting Ro Ra's wedding. 
But turns out, the entire wedding was just a marketing stunt. A young and son Guy, who had just graduated from high school, were launching a wedding planning business. Poor June felt embarrassed because people online were now calling him a wedding crasher. As for the Twinkle Star account, it was still a mystery. When Rora asked on Suk, he claimed he didn't own it. After some investigation, it turned out that Mr. Manbach was the one who had sent the piano to Rora. The following day, as Ro Ray was chatting with Mr. Mainbach, he suddenly had a heart attack. Rora quickly got him to a hospital. Later, when his family arrived, Rora felt it best to head home. She called June to update him, but asked him not to rush over. She wanted him to focus on his upcoming college exams instead. Then there was some drama about the place Rora and Mrs. Jin were living in. Due to some money issues, Mr. Manbach's family wanted to sell it. This was a tough pill to swallow, since that house held so many memories. Some people suggested that Rora should meet Mr. Moon, thinking he was somehow connected to her dad's business in a suspicious way. However, it turned out that Mr. Moon was just an ordinary guy trying his luck in acting. It appeared that the strange cruise ship incident was all part of his acting gig. He even gave Rora some money and promised to support her in the future. Meanwhile, Jun crossed paths with an old high school friend named Chung Gideon, who used to have a crush on him. Over coffee, she mentioned that she had been accepted to a school abroad and hoped that Jun would consider fulfilling a promise he had made to their late friend Jahan to study there. The next day, Jun had plans to meet up with Rora at a cafe, but Gideon, wanting to spend more time with him, led Jun to their meetup spot. However, once they got there, Jun dozed off. Soon after, Gideon just took him home leaving Ro Ro worried when she couldn't find him at the cafe. So she headed to his house to see if he was okay. But you can imagine how surprised Ro Ro was when she spotted a young girl leaving Jun's house. After overhearing a conversation between the girl and Mrs. Cho, Ro Ro jumped to conclusions, thinking that the girl might be Jun's new girlfriend. But Yang even had a conversation with Ro Ro, suggesting that she should distance herself from Jun. Feeling confused and hurt, Ro Ro returned to Unpo, wondering if Jun had started a new relationship. On the other hand, Ha Young and Sung Ji were on cloud nine because they had just started dating. When Rora shared her concerns about Jun with them, the pair decided to play detective. They roped in Min Su to help them figure out what's going on between Jun and that mystery girl. One evening, Jun asked Rora to meet up, but he wasn't his usual self. He was distant and cold, and he asked Rora to keep her distance. He wanted to end their romantic relationship and told her about his plans to study abroad. Feeling lost and hurt by Jun's sudden change, Rora's spirits were slightly lifted when she got a call from her piano teacher, who said she was coming back to Korea soon. Coincidentally, around the same time, Jun was planning to send a friend off to America. So, Rora thought it would be a good time to pick her teacher up. Meanwhile, young Ju was curious about the medication Un Siuk always seemed to be taking. So, she sneakily grabbed some to find out what it was. She got it tested in a lab, and to her relief, it was just regular vitamins. However, during a visit to the hospital, young Ju and Jong Nam had a surprising revelation. They discovered that Jun was the son of the hospital's owner. The next day, Ro Ra, after chatting with her tutor, decided to study further abroad. Her tutor believed this would help Ro Ra move on from her sadness and aim for a brighter future. And Siuk heard about her decision and was heartbroken. But he understood. Before Rora departed, Yun Seok shared a secret. The owner of the Twinkle Star account was actually Jun. Meanwhile, Jun was busy getting ready to leave. Mrs. Cho felt sad to see him go, but it turned out Jun wasn't leaving for college. He needed medical treatment. Jun had been facing health issues like frequent nosebleeds and weakness because he had leukemia. He decided to go overseas for chemotherapy and didn't want Rora to know about his illness or be burdened by it. Realizing that his time might be limited, Jun wanted to see Ro Ro one last time before starting his treatment. He also visited Unpo to catch up with friends and have a small gathering. During this, he asked Un Seok to take care of Ro Ro, which got Un Seok thinking. As time passed, Jun would occasionally call Ro Ro from the hospital. His health was getting bad, and he looked pale. However, Ro Ro thought Jun was simply busy with his college life. On the other hand, Mrs. Jin planned a Christmas celebration in a few months, and Rora invited Jun to join. That day, she got happy news that Mr. Man Bok was better now and ready to go home. He gave her a letter from Jun, asking her to let Mr. Man Bok read it. While getting his treatment, Jun spent months practicing a song that Rora loved. 
After a while, the much-awaited Christmas celebration was here, and Rora and her friends were all set for a musical performance. Everyone was looking forward to Jun's arrival, but after waiting for a long time, he didn't show up. They got a message saying his flight was delayed due to snow. Instead, Jun had sent a video of him practicing, which Rora played along with on the piano. It was emotional and touching, making everyone miss him even more, especially since he was expected to arrive the next day. At that time, Mr. Manbach felt really emotional. He received a letter from June, but it turned out to be a farewell message. June wanted him to look after himself and shared about his own health struggles. Unsook did an impressive show too, and it made Mr. Manbach's ex-wife hopeful about reuniting. But the next day brought some shocking news. Instead of June, it was Mrs. Cho who appeared. She told them that June couldn't return, and it was actually her who sent the video and message. The video was a month old and made by June when he was still healthy. He didn't want Rora to see him in a bad state, so he kept his true condition hidden. Mrs. Cho's words hinted that June had passed away, and she was really thankful to Rora for being there for him during his tough times. This news hit everyone hard, especially Mrs. Jin and Ian Seok. They never expected June to leave them so soon. Now, let's fast forward five years. Rora is still in Nunpo. She decided to postpone her plans to study abroad and is running her piano lessons business. A young and son Ji got married and have a cute little boy. Un Siok and Young Ju are getting closer again. They've experienced the best and worst together and now realize they should be together. All these years, Rora stayed single, holding on to the memories of June. Then, one day, while playing a song that took her back to the days with June, she had the biggest surprise of her life. June was there, alive and well. Turns out, June spent the last five years battling his sickness and chose not to burden Roro with the truth. But now they're together, ready to dive deep into their love story. Roro's piano music touched and inspired many, offering hope and comfort. And with that, the film ends. The moral lesson from this film is if you love someone, just wait to tell them until you're sick. Because the chance they will return your feelings are bigger.